Hallelujah. We give God praise and we thank God for his many blessings that he has given unto us as a people. Today we are here in the midst of crisis. Today we are here, but God is with us. We love the Lord God because he has heard our cries and our supplication. Today we are here from God's Assembly Worship Center to have another Bible study with you all and with ourselves, yes because the word of God also applies to us. So we welcome you this evening. We give God the glory and the honor and the praise. And now I'll turn over to Pastor Evans, who will begin in prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this evening for your goodness, for your mercies that you have given unto us. You extend our lives that we can see and our ears that we can hear on our hearts that we can understand. Father, we ask you to bless everyone here this evening that will be listening to this broadcast. We ask you, O oh God, that you will strengthen their minds and their hearts and they give attentive ears to thy word. Thy word have I hid my heart that I will not sin against thee. And we thank you this evening in Jesus' name. This evening, we would like to uh, share good, good thoughts to you, dear saints, and especially to the ones that are raised in a Christian home, the ones that uh, God has called and uh, that is using and wants to use. And we have to be very careful in this Christian pathway. There's uh, one, uh, two people on the Christian pathway, and that is Jesus and you, Jesus and me. We all work, walk hand to hand with him. And so there is no, there's no more space for another person in the Christian pathway. Uh, the child of God that is living for the Lord and obeying his word and keeping his commandments, you and the Lord walking on this journey. And this is going to be leading into the first resurrection. So dear saints, I'm encouraging your hearts here this evening that you will look at yourselves. We have to look at ourselves if we are in the faith or not, because it's very important because perilous time is coming on the face of the earth. And this time God has allowed us that we are uh, to get the chance to uh, speak the words of the Lord that he called us to speak to our generation that we are living in. So this evening, it's a, it's a time I would like to speak on the, the topic of rebellion, neglection, or rebellion, we call it, is very costly. Very, very costly. And because it costs a lot, you have to put out uh, everything you've got to fit in this world. And if the Lord has called us to uh, a work for him and we do not put out what we should put out for him, it's going to cost us dearly. Because when we uh, ignore the Lord and uh, cleave to our own ways and uh, we do our own thing, when we cannot listen to the master and follow his command, some of his ways according to the flesh, the human flesh, is very hard. But his, his word said, obedient is better than sacrifice. And to hearken to gifts, the fat of lambs, is, it's not important so much, but the obedience. The obedience to the Lord, it brings 
on the blessings of God. It brings on the, uh, the presence of the Lord. It brings to us uh, a lifetime protection. And it also carried out beyond our lifetime, our children and our children, children, because the word of God that always stand up, stand out and always looking out and handing out its hands to the ones that are willing and obedient to follow. So here this evening, we're going to the book of Chronic Chronicles, chapter uh, uh, 28. We are starting on verse 1. This man that was in Jerusalem, the seed of uh, David. Uh, you know when we understand that the Lord said that David, a man of my own heart. And uh, the Lord used David. People said all kind of thing about him, but that's a champion from all time. There's no human being is such a champion like what David was because he did what God asked him to do. Made his mistake, but it's between God and him. And God worked it out with him and he worked it out with God. So here this evening, we are going to talk about this man in Jerusalem after David passed away, after Solomon passed away. Is, uh, uh, and he was grown into the king's house because his father was a king and because he was a king he raised he saw his dad did very well and among and he's from the tribe of judah and he did very well in his house and in judah and i'm sure certain his son saw all the intricacies of his works and his deeds that he did because he said his dad did very well Right in the sight of the Lord. One thing is, it's very important as children that's coming up into a home. We must observe and see the kind of home that we are raising, the natural home. And look at the intricacies of the workings of the home. The godliness, the godly characteristics of the home that we were raised in. And some of us pick up the world. And the scripture teaches us, love not the world. Nor the things of the world. Because in the world is the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye. It's not of God, it's of the world. And it will damage God's people. It will bring you down to nothing. You have nothing. You don't have God. You don't as it were, of hope. Because we are in the flesh. Your grandfather died. Your grandma died. And so we are going to die someday. Some die before they are old. So I am speaking to your children that are raised in a Christian home. And should know better. And to follow the principles of the words of God. This man Ahaz was uh, 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, like unto his father David. You see, the man is dead. David was passed on God, but his descendants were David. Not like he carried the traits of David. But his spirit was strayed from the principles of God. You see? So he, because he was strayed from the principle of God, he did his own thing. And the warning sometimes comes to children of that's supposed to know better. And they ignore the calling, ignore the principle. That what God, when you were born into a home and it's a Christian home, take heed. And this is one of the things that the Lord taught me. Take heed. Lest at any time you should let them slip. So here it is. It's a counsel from the word of God to those ones that are taking the word of God very careless and simple. So here it is for 
he walked not in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten image for, for Balaam. He got out and did his own thing. He, he did molten image of the flesh. The rest of the nation. That's what God told the children of Israel. When you get into that land, do you not follow? The principle, you see, is the same thing of the Christianity today that they call children of God today. We have to watch ourselves. We do not walk after the things that the world have or what the world have to give. Sure, you got to go to work and do your thing to accumulate your finances to live, but you can live for the grace of God unto, appeared unto all men according to the scriptures. Teaching them to deny ungodliness, worldly us, and live godly in this present sinful world. It's a sinful world. Destructive world is not going to be better. It's going to be worse, worse and worse every day. So I am asking you that are listening to the sound of my voice, take heed to the things that you are listening to, lest at any time it should leave your mind. The enemy is like a roaring lion trying to seek to snap the words from our minds. But greater is he with you than he that is in the world because he cannot overcome you when you draw close to God. This man built Baal, Baal high, high places for Balaam, uh, contrary to idol worship, and moreover, he burns incense in the valley of Ahimon and burned his children in the fire. That means he, he offered his children in the fire. The man was very defiant. He was very rude and disrespectful to the Creator. A man that uh, the creator of heaven and earth. This man's spirit was nasty. This man's spirit was defiant. He has no respect for the creator that's above. Because the Lord sees every man in any area we are. If we are sleeping, he sees us. If we are working, he sees us. If we are cooking, he sees us. If we are in the dark, even there, he can see us. And if we go on a submarine under the sea, he's right there. You can't stop. God is all over. Anywhere you go, the, uh, the word call him Im, Im, uh, Im, it was omnipotent, 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 omnipresent, and om omniscient. And these are the, um, the characteristics of our Savior. And uh, here, Moreover, he burned incense and in the valley of Ahiman and burned his children in the fire after the abomination of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. This man is disrespectful. My God, tonight, tonight I am speaking to somebody. Look to yourself that those things that thou was wrong, that you don't lose them. But that you work to receive a full reward. So here God is warning someone concerning his principles and his word. Your life is weighing in the balance. And God is watching and seeing. He sacrificed all to the burnt incense in the high places, on the hills, on under the green trees. He makes sure he goes around and do all these kind of things any place he go. The man was walking in total rebellion unto God Almighty. And so then he never stopped. Moreover, the Lord is God delivered him into the hand of the king of Assyria because he go and mixed up and do these evil things on the king of Syria came down and, and uh, smote them and carried away the great multitude of them captives and brought them unto Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel who smote him with a great slaughter. So when we do evil, when we do rebellion and keep on doing these things, it is going to cost us a lot 
It's not only cost us, it costs our children. It costs our generation. But thanks be to God for the smart ones that can listen to the words of God and follow it, knowing that God is able to take them through. Because Peter remind us, this blessing is not for us alone, but is unto our children, children as many generations as the Lord thy God shall call. God is there to call every generation, all when you are gone. Speak to them. Show them the truth. Lead them in the paths of righteousness. For his near, dear name's sake, God is always there to help you through the difficult times and the, the task that we go through. So here, dear children of God, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, when the evil days come not. He can say have no pleasure in them. When you lose your teeth, when you lose your voice, when your mind is on God, your faith is built on nothing else but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. He's, he will come forth for you all and bring you right through the troubled times. When difficulty comes, he's there to lead you into the paths that you slip not as the scripture said. You run through a true and leap over a wall because your faith is in God. And while Ahaz delivered, got delivered into the hand of, uh, of the king of Assyria, for uh, the sons of uh, Ramethria slew Judah and 120,000 one day. So in other words, when God is against you, you do things contrary to the will of God. God called these people out of uh, uh, Egypt and brought them into a promised land. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you, but I'm going to stand with you in every way because I want you to keep my commandments. I want you, it's the same thing with God's people today. God called us out of darkness into a marvelous light. God wants us to keep his commandments. And God is looking forward. There's a responsibility is given to the human being to keep the commandments of God. People said, thou shalt not and thou shalt not is past. Let me tell you news. It still stand up. You go out and do contrary things to God. There's a law that is pointing a finger back at us. It's not a saving grace, but you don't. He said, thou shalt not steal. Don't take what is your, not yours. And when you go, there's a law that is pointing its finger. Thou shalt not sow discord among the birds. There's a law that pointing a finger back at you. It points a finger. And you take yourself from under the grace of God and walking not according. The law is there to point a finger. Yes, and this is why he has lost to so many people because of his total rebellion. This rebellion not only caused Ahaz the problem. It caused the people that he was a leader of. Judgment came on the people that he was of. It's the same thing with a pastor. When a pastor is pastoring an assembly and you have a group of people pastoring, what you have to do is keep the words of God. No matter how tough it is, it's not everybody is going to love you. It's not everybody is going to want to hear you talk. It's not everybody who like to hear you minister the word of God and bring a prophecy. But you, all you have to do is stand up and speak the whole counsel of God. Because when we move away from under the covering of God, it's going to cost us a lot. And not only us, but the cost the people a lot so the enemy came and took them away destroy how many thousands because of his rebellion it not only cost the king but it cost the people and he is totally responsible when you're in leadership you got to be very careful Ministers that are going out and taking out pastoral work, like, like you are really called for a pastor, God help you. If God don't call you to in a leadership to be a pastoral role, God help you. You pick up something that you can't handle, the Lord help you there. Because if you're not called a pastor and you take up the work, this tolerance you're not going to have. They call you as a teacher, don't try to pastor. You do your job. And by so doing, you're going to find out there will be a blessing follow us 
when we fall, uh, find out what we are called for and follow it. And Zadish, the mighty men of Ephraim, slew Manasseh, the king, a son. And uh, Ezekim, the governor of the house, and Elkanah, that was next to the, uh, the king. And the children of Israel carried away captives, all their brethren, 2,000 women, sons and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them and brought them spoil to Samaria. Because it caused us a lot of them a lot of problems, and they took all the poor women, they suffered the consequences, and the poor children that are so innocent had to go. No matter what happened, the wrath of God came down because of the disobedience of one person, the one leader into the house of God. It's the same thing when you see a minister that going around and going and fooling around the sisters inside of the church. They cannot pray with them and find good husbands. They're running after and give them a chance that they live a good life. Our job as pastor, we have to. We have to. Make sure the principle of God is with us and that we can show the good principles of God to God's people that they can learn to understand how they are to function right before the Lord. We don't, we should not be careless. We're in the house of God and all we do is run after the young sisters. It's wrong. At night you, you, you want to go sleep with them. It's wrong. Behave yourself in the house of God. Keep the word of God. And let the Lord keep you. But you break the word of God. God break us. So here it is. But the prophet of the Lord was there. Whose name was Odad. And he went out before the host. That came to Samaria and said unto them. Behold because the Lord God of our father was wrought with Judah. He had delivered them into your hands. And ye have slain them. In rage. And reach it up to, to heaven. He said God saw it. God saw what you did. Because of the rebellion. You, God saw that you killed the innocent people. They, they did not rebel against the Lord. But because of the leader. That gives the problem. Leaders have to be very careful. Leaders are shepherds. We should lead and lead respectfully. Lead and lead godly. With confidence. Lead and lead faithfully. That God can bless us and the congregation. And now ye the, uh, the purpose to keep under the children of Judah in Jerusalem. For ben Benidad... And uh, Ben Woman also you, but you are there not with, with you, but uh, are there not with you, even you, your sins against the Lord God. This man was telling them, your sins against the Lord God, if you take away the king of Judah and take him over into uh, Damascus, that's okay. But you came down and slay. The innocent people. God's going to deal with you my friend. Now hear me therefore. And deliver the, the captives again. Which you have taken captive. Of your brethren. For the fierce hunger of the Lord is upon you. So God's going to deal with you. When we do our deeds. Don't worry yourselves. And if it's evil. We, it's going to come back. And if we do good, it's come back. But if we do evil, the wrath of God is going to come back on us because we have done evil. Then certain of the head of the children of, of Ephraim, Azarath, the son of uh, Bahanan, uh, Bahananan, Birchla, and the son of uh, Mesh, Meshel Shemet, and Jehizla, the son of uh, uh, Shulholam and uh, Amaza, the son of uh, Adeliah, stood against. See, they named these people, stood against them that came from the war. You see, 
There are some people that is not going to bow, no matter how strong and mighty the enemy is. They're not going to bow to them, but they are going to be stand as a bulwark before and protect the house of God and the children of the Lord. And he said unto them, ye shall not bring me in the captives to their far uh, weariness. We are offender against, ye are offender against the Lord already. Ye intend to add more on your sins and add trespasses uh, for your trespasses. Is great and there is fierce wrath against Israel. But God is not going to leave his people like that. So the the, the um so the almond men lift up the captives and the spoil before the princes and all of the congregation. And then and the men which were exposed by the name rose up and took the captives with the spoil. Clothed all with the uh, uh, naked among them, and arrange, arrange them, and shod them, and gave them to eat and to drink. So you see, men of God not going to be playing. Men of God that is called by God is going to stand up and behave themselves and know who uh, they are, and anoint them and carry all the feeble of them. On asses, they raise up and protect the feeble and brought them to Jericho in the city of uh, palm trees in the dear brethren that they return to Samaria. So there are some men that raise up under the leading of God and inspiration of God Almighty when the king should be the leader. The pastor should be the leader. It leads to the children inside of the house of God to stand up and protect the children. Of God. Oh bless the Lord. So here it is. Another time. Did King Hias. Send on to the king of Assyria. To help. The man still. The man still. Want Assyria to help. For again. Edomites had came. Unto smitten Judah. And carry them away captives. In all what they did. And so here. So the, the Philistines also had. Uh, divided their cities. Of uh, the uh, low country. And up of the south of Judah. And had taken Beth Shemeth. Adron. And. Uh, Sidagat. And Soko. With the villages thereof. And uh, Timan. With the villages thereof. Uh, Kehei has as a, and the village thereof. Therefore they dwelt there. And the Lord brought Judah low. Because of Ahaz the king of Israel. For he make Judah naked. And this word that he use naked. That means the protection of God was not over in Judah. And because it was not over Judah, because of the evil doings of, uh, of uh, the doings of uh, of the children of um, the children of Israel, the doings of A as the children of Israel, it make them naked, and this nakedness means. Divine protection. It's gone. So if you're serving the Lord. And God called you. There's a divine protection over your life. But when the presence of God. Leave you. You're naked. Your covering is gone. Your heart has changed. Your spirit man has changed. That means. Your faith is not solid. But godly faith into a human being is a substance. It's a godly substance that preserves that human. Uh-huh. It preserves and keep that human, that substance of faith. It substantiate that faithful human to God. That's why the scripture said in Hebrews 11, these all died in faith. Not receiving the promises. 
But the faith that they have, they look for a city whose maker and maker and founder is God Almighty. No one else. And so the people of the earth today, if they know what I know, and take the scriptures and read it, and obey the word of God, you're going to still have the same faith that Abraham had. And God called him and he obeyed God. And there's a blessing for Abraham. And we obey God. There's a blessing for us. Because there's come a time. Coming a time. It's counting down. That the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Noah preached 120 years. But it came to the time. When God said I'm going to pour out the waters on the earth. Because a man's heart were evil continually and would not change. So here it is. He as, as, a, as a king of Israel had made Judah naked. And true, it became naked. The covering of the Lord left Judah, left the children of Israel, and it bring on evil upon the land. So when we serve God and obey God, there's a covering over us and over our children, children. There's a, uh, there's a covering that covers the children and cover us. And uh, the protection will be upon them just as it upon us. And take that the uh, 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 king of Assyria came unto him and uh, distressed him and strengthened him not. And this king of Assyria didn't stand with him, with his men. And Ahaz took away the portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the house of the, of the king and of the pr princes and gave them in, uh, to the king of Assyria. But he helped him not. So the man that you are tu you're turning against God and you turn to somebody who's going to help you in the flesh, in, the king of Assyria did not help Ahaz because he did what was wrong in the sight of the Lord. The Lord called you out of darkness. He wants you to stay steadfast. And in of the distress did he trespass yet the more against the Lord. This is the king Ahaz. He trespassed more against the Lord. And he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus which smote him and he, and he said because the God of the kings of Assyria helped them help them therefore will I sacrifice unto them and they that they may help me but they were ruined of him and of all Israel so in other words when you look outside of godly people when you're a child of God and look outside of godly people you're going to get nothing but trouble and he has gathered together all the vessels of the house of the Lord and cut in, in pieces and vessels of the house of God and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. He did not open it and he made altars in every corner of Jerusalem. Man, the man was evil. And in every several city of Judah and make high places and burn incense unto the, the gods and provoke the anger of the Lord of his father David, now the rest of the act of his ways, first, last, behold, they were written in the book of uh, Judah and Israel. This man did all the evil, and Ea slept with his father, and they buried him in the city, even to Jerusalem, but brought him not unto the sepulchres of the king of Israel, and Ezekiah, his son, reign in his stead. So he has made his bed in the hell, and the hell be his portion. You see, when a man decides to do evil, and they keep on doing evil, I think Paul made mention one time, and he said, your conscience is going to be seared. With a hot iron. That means you're just like the devil himself. You're not going to be able to do what you think you're doing, what you're doing right, to repent. You, you don't want to, you want to do your thing. You do it to the last. And whatever your decision make is yours until the end. 
So God is good and help the children of Israel. And I'm certain. But when Ezekiah became king over, over Israel, Ezekiah reigned when he was five and twenty years old, older and reigned in the in the twentieth years in Jerusalem and he died, and his name was Abijah, his daughter uh, Zechariah. So his uh, so his his, uh, his name was Abijah and the daughter is Zechariah. And he did what which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all David his father. So you see, some will come up and do evil. Some will come up and do good. But my God, God help us. If we do not take the words of God and follow them. Grown into a Christian home, that, not plain, that means anything. Oh, my dad was a pastor. It means nothing. My mom was a, a man, an evangelist. It means nothing. But if we are raised into a home and do what the word of God says, look in details and see how our parents live. As human being and faithful to God's word, let it be a portion of us. And we are going to receive a crown of glory that faded not away. So here this evening, my friend, as I spoke to you concerning the words of the Lord, may it bring a bell in your heart anywhere you may go. And may the words of God keep you from falling. May the words of God lift you up. May it uh, shine in your hearts. <clears throat> and that the shining of God, an everlasting shining that you cannot get away from the words. Because the words of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Let us keep it in our hearts. Let it keep it in our soul. And the truths of God can be with you, with you when we go out and come in. Blessed shall be your field. Blessed shall be your city. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Blessed shall be the ground that you walk on. Blessed shall be anywhere you go. Because there is a blessing that follow. De Deuteronomy chapter 28 give us all these blessings. When we follow the words of God in, and, and, and please the Lord. There is going to be a sweet blessing that follow us. There is a presence of God that overshadow God's children. The presence of God that keep us from falling, from making mistakes, from going astray, because our mind is made up and we won't turn back. And our decision should be follow in the Lord each step of the way. So here this evening, we are so grateful to have you. It's good to have you. And we are glad that you are listening and let the word of God dwell in your hearts literally about all things. So God bless you here this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. And we ask you, Lord, to bless your people in every aspect of the way. These words that I have given to your children, Lord, let it not fall to the ground. Lord, let they observe it. Take it word and examine it. And see it for themselves because every man has to give an account for their own self. So may God bless you here this evening in Jesus' name. So God keep you and may his face shine upon you and give you peace.